Hey, good morning, everyone. Hi, it's Frank Sanya here again. The topic for today is a question, okay? Who are the people you hang around with? Who are the people you hang around with? Who are your friends? Who are the people you call your friends? Watch this. In business, who are your business acquaintance? Who, who are they? Who are the people you seem to hang around with? Watch. There is an old adage, and I promise you, you have heard it. Watch this. Show me your friends, and I will tell you who you are. I had it so much when I was young, when I was a, a young man. My mom drilled it to me. I cannot tell you. Okay? All right? I got to a point when I got in real estate and I started studying business. I begin to hear it in another way. Watch this. You will hear something like this. Show me your three, four, five closest friends of yours. Tell me exactly what their income is and I can almost guarantee you what your average income is. Show me your friends and I can tell you exactly what your income is. I, I can be so close. And when you go do this study, you begin to, to truly, truly see it. Okay? The question is, why is it this way? So, I'm going to illustrate it to you in with three different stories. Okay? Because sometimes we learn more from stories. I'm going to introduce to you in my own story. I'm going to introduce it to you in what I see in everyday people's life. And I'm going to introduce it to you in, in business. Okay? All right? See, pe people, think, people tend to think that they are separate from their business. But the real truth is, what is your business? Your business is nothing more than an extension of who you are. That's it. Okay? You can't separate you from your business. People try to do this. Or they will tell you, I am not my business. It's a lie. You are you. Okay? You are an extension of your business. Or your business is an extension of you. So, oh, watch. When, when I was younger, when my mom decided to to divorce my father, okay? All right? And one of the reasons why she did this was because of the people my father was hanging around. I remember vividly in the 1960s, okay? All right? Um, in the, in around around mid-60s, mid I was around the age of five or six years of age, or maybe seven, around that time. We moved into, into this new uh, subdivision, and... Pretty soon, my dad was hanging around this man who lives in, in our subdivision. Okay? All right? And my mom didn't like this gentleman. And I remember this. My mom and my father would get into an, an argument about this man. Okay? All right? And the argument was this predominantly. Okay? Um, at first, it was just a neighborhood friend. But as time goes on, it began to be more than that. Okay? I'll tell you the way it, it happens. Sometimes my mom will call me like around 10, 11 o'clock. Sometimes I'll be sleeping and she'll wake me up. She, she'll say, go get your dad. Your dad is at this particular person's house. Okay? Tell him to come home. Okay? All right? And I will get there. And you know what I would see? Now, in those days, you will see my father with this other man, okay? They were outside, all right, in the yard, okay, all right? And they would be drinking, smoking, having fun. And pretty soon, you started seeing all these other women around them, okay? At first, it was like, okay, he will go... He will come home around 10, then it began to be 11. It began to be 12. And sometimes it's 3 o'clock in the morning till what time? In the weekend, 
is early in the morning, like five o'clock. And my mom and my dad will get into a horrible fight. Okay? I don't need to tell you. All right? Okay. Eventually, what, what went on. But my mom decided, since my father would not listen, that he couldn't live with my father. So she divorced my father, plus among other things. Okay? And from a very early age, it has been drilled into me the type of people I hang around with. My mom, especially, beside my, my two other brothers, she, she primarily focused this on me. Because she was always worried that sometimes I hang around people she didn't like. Okay? My story is no different. You see it. See, when I became, when my, my mom was a single, a single mother, okay? Raising her three sons by herself. All right? And this was the main issue especially for me. And I'd, up until today, let me say this to you, I don't have that many friends, okay? That's the honest truth. And I really paid attention to this because when I look at the times I get in trouble, I was always in trouble with, with friends. Up to the point where I decided I don't want friends. See, my best friend is my wife today. That was that on my mother's side, okay? Right. When my wife and I got married, we bought our, our first townhouse. Uh, after we've lived there for about five years, there was this couple that moved across the street from us. Okay? They were rentals. Okay? The original owner had, had left, rented that property. Okay? And this Russian family moved in. Okay? There was a, a father, a mother with three kids. Okay? two boys and a girl, okay? The youngest boy became very good friends with my boys, okay? The girl had some friends. She was not really, really close to anybody in the neighborhood. Their oldest son, this guy, okay, he didn't talk to anybody in, in, in the neighborhood. You say hi to him, he'll just say hi to you. This guy never looked up. He, he, when, you, when you meet him, he would never look you in the eye. Okay? All right? He didn't have any friends at all, initially. Okay? On the third year, when they were in that house, I noticed one day he had this friend that came. And they will come in and, and pick him up in their car. Okay? Right? Play loud music and what have you. Okay? They were in the same uh, middle school with these friends. One day, believe me when I tell you, I am not kidding you. Right? We saw all these police surrounded this townhouse. And we, Everybody in the neighborhood came out and we didn't know what had happened. Okay? All right? It was later on that evening we saw in the news this gentleman and the guys that he was with, they were arrested, guess what? For armed robbery. We live outside of Washington, D.C. in a county called Montgomery County. Okay? They went to go rob a bank in Dumfries, Virginia. All right? And this young man that I, that I told you rarely talked to, to anybody, okay, was the getaway driver and he was sentenced to five years. It was really, truly sad. It was, it was a sad story. Okay? From there, the, the family they left because the police kept looking, okay? They kept coming. They kept looking at that family. And eventually, I guess the owner decided that he wasn't going to renew their lease, okay? All right? And that begs me to start it really trying to study criminals, okay? When you look at criminals, 
criminals, for some reason or the other, they tend to surround themselves with criminals. Okay? All right? You will see it. Believe me, I am not kidding you. When you study successful people, people with money, okay, you will see this same phenomenon. See, good human beings with money, okay, bad human beings with money. What they tend to do is they tend to surround themselves with people that think like them. Good human beings with good successful people, okay, with money. Bad human beings, same people with this. So, I began to look into this. And there was a word that kept coming up that I kept saying, and it's the word influence. Okay? All right? Okay? I've done a little bit similar video to this. Go, go watch it. I wanted to know, okay, how do people get like this? Okay? At first, when I study criminals, okay, I began to see that they have, they think alike. Okay? They definitely think alike without a doubt. They see the same thing that other criminals think, see. Okay? When I began to look into the word infection, see, influence, infection, the same thing you begin to see. What's a human being? A human being is an infectious creature. All right? And there's a word that you see time and time again, okay? And it's the word transmission. So let me show it to you here so you understand this. I wrote down here, I said, where does the word infection comes from? Okay? All right? I'm going to go through this with you quickly. All right? So you see it. I like this word. Watch this one. A word on the modern use of the term. Infection. Watch this. Okay? All right? I, I like this. Okay? It is a symbol with what? Contagion. Define contagion as being transmission. You see it? Okay? Right. So, watch. Look at the word influence. The power or capacity to cause an effect in indirect or tangible way to sway. You see it? Watch this. To exercise influence on affect somebody. So you begin to see it. Okay. Now, this same phenomenon you see in business. I am not kidding you. You will see it in business without a doubt. Okay? Right. One of the fastest and quickest way to scale your business, trust me here when I tell you, is surrounding yourself with certain types of people. First, the people you want to surround yourself with are people that do more than you. Okay? All right? Okay? These are people that are selling homes way more than you. Okay? Right? But it's not just because they are selling more homes than us. You know what we look for in them? Is their character. Okay, what kind of a character does this person have? Good human beings that list and sell real estate at a high volume. Bad human beings that list and sell homes at a high volume. Well, what we want is the character of God in these people. Okay, so how do, how do we do it? Okay, one of the first way to do that is to surround yourself with good human beings that do more deals than you. You, you know what I call it? We mastermind 
we come together. We share ideas together. You don't try to figure it out all by yourself. And trust me this, I know this to be absolutely true. If you surround yourself with you people like this, your business would increase. I'm going to show you in, in, in another way. Take a young, poor guy or girl. Okay? All right? Take them from a ghetto. Take that person from a ghetto. Move them into a nice subdivision where they're exposed to knowledge. And I guarantee you this, they buy into it, they become a different person without, without a doubt. Okay? Right. I'm going to show it to you in, in another way as it relates to real life of people. I saw this one recently. I am not kidding you. All right? And you will see it. You will see a guy or a girl that is married. Okay? Has friends. Okay? All right? They're having problem in their marriage. You know, there's no marriage without problem. Okay? And what you will see the guy or the girl is begin to discuss their marriage with their friends. Okay? Oh, he or she is doing this. Now, when you look at the friends, they are either married or are not married themselves. Nine times out of ten, they are not married. And they go get their cue from their friends. And before long, you, you know it, they are no longer married. This stuff is everywhere. I'm not kidding you. You see it in a lot of families. It's, as a matter of fact, I believe it's in every family without a shadow of a doubt. So, lesson, we know that the type of people that you surround yourself with matters. Let me show you to you in the scripture. When I finally saw it in the scripture, I said to myself, my goodness, this is it. And it's in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 1. Okay? I want to read it to you. Please, I beg you. Okay? Proverbs, watch. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insight of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live discipline and watch successful lives, to help them do what is right, just, and fair. These proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. Watch this. Like the wise listen to do these proverbs, these proverbs, and become even wiser. Let those with understanding receive guidance by exploring the meaning in these proverbs and parables. The words of the wise and their riddles. Watch this one. For the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. <laughs> I love this one. I love this one. Watch this. My child, listen when your father corrects you. Right? Don't neglect your mother's instruction. I thank my mom today. Believe me, I thank her today. What you learn from them will crown you with grace and be a chain of honor around your neck. Watch this one very carefully. My child, if sinners entice you, if sinners entice you, turn your back on them. Watch this. They may say, come and join us. Join in. They call you. Your friends, they call you and say, join us. 
Let's hide and kill someone just for fun. Let's ambush the innocent. Let's swallow them alive like graves. Let's swallow them whole. Let those who go down to the pit of death think of the great things we will get. We will fill our houses with all stuff we take. Come, throw in your lot with us. We will share the loot. Watch this one. My child, don't go along with them. Stay far away from their paths. They rush to commit evil deeds. They hurry to commit murder. Watch this. If a bird sees a trap being set, it knows to stay away. But these people set an ambush for themselves. They are trying to get themselves killed. Such is the faith of all who are greedy for money. It robs them of their life. See, let me, let me tell you something. When you look at this interpretation, bad human beings, when their friends call them, join us, let's go do these junk things, these awful things, these evil things, do not join them. He tell them that. Their faith, trust me when I tell you, okay, always end badly. Without a doubt. And it doesn't make any difference whether they have money or, or they do not have money. The, 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 ones, the ones that have money that lives a righteous life, guess what? They live a, a righteous life. Okay? Bad ones, it always end bad for them. Okay? So, we know the influence of people around you. It matters. Spend time in business with people that are going somewhere. Spend time with people they know more than you. Spend time with people you want to become who they are or even greater than them. And this is what we teach here. This is what I do. Okay? All right? I know it to be true. Watch this. If you like this, if you like this type of video, please subscribe. Okay? All right? And better, watch. Click the link. Schedule your appointment. Okay? What I teach is the, the words of God, the laws of God, the laws of nature apply to human knowledge. That's what I teach. Okay? All right? Okay? Because I now know is that it is the spiritual that governs the natural. That's the real truth. And if you know, you know. If you do not know, you do not know. And trust me when I tell you, God wants to prosper you. Okay? All the evidence of, of, of prosperity is being given to us. It's in here. For I am the one that gives success and I am the one that creates disaster. I give prosperity and I create disaster. Go read it in, in Isaiah. You'll see it. Watch. Thank you for, uh, for watching this video. God bless you. Click the link. Schedule your appointment. And I'll see you next, okay, next week. Thank you so much. God bless. And take care now. And go crush it. Make it a profitable day. Take care. Bye-bye. Nothing below Nothing above No matter how low I get Lord, you are enough